I have clicked onto the tropical tidbit for Monday, August 22nd, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, the Atlantic has awoken, we now have three areas of interest. We have Tropical Storm Fiona, we have uh, Tropical Depression 7, newly minted, will likely become Tropical Storm Gaston, and quite possibly a hurricane over the next several days. Uh, but most of the talk is actually over the one system that is not yet a storm, Invest 99L, and that's what we'll be spending most of our time on today. Quickly though on Fiona, continuing to be weak and sheared, moving northwest, likely south of Bermuda according to the forecast track, and is likely to dissipate somewhere in the southwest Atlantic over the next several days, although it might have some interesting little interactions with Invest 99, which we'll talk about in a second. And a TD7, again, is likely to become Gaston and move out into the central Atlantic. And this is forecast almost universally by the models to become a powerful hurricane, perhaps our first big one of the year. But fortunately, it looks to stay out to sea as of right now. And the NHC forecast for that, the first one will be out probably by the time this video is done. Uh, that said, Invest 99 here has been this large lumbering tropical wave coming westward across the Atlantic now, moving toward the northern Lesser Antilles, and a couple of days ago was back here and had basically no clouds with it. And this is one of those classic waves that comes off and you see the circle, you see the circulation spinning away in here, but uh, no thunderstorms with it. As it's come west, as usually happens, these larger waves uh, gradually start to mix out some of the dry air in their immediate um, environment and begin to fire convection. And this has begun to do that over the last 24 hours or so. And uh, this convection really isn't that organized at the moment. If you take a good look at it, we have low-level winds out of the north and some very, very weak westerlies on the south side. Very weak. And it's very hard to tell what's actually under here, but most likely it's a sharp but open wave axis. There doesn't seem to be any direct evidence for a closed surface circulation, at least a tight one. Even though there are surface westerlies down here, this is likely to be mostly an open wave axis with a very, very loosely closed um, streamline in here, if anything. Um, but it's at the outer... Uh, edges and there's nothing really tight going on under these thunderstorms most likely. You can kind of tell because of how the convection is rather sporadic and is not uh, indicating any organized structure underneath. There's also some shear coming down from around Fiona. There's a ridge uh, kind of centered right about here in the upper levels and so you have this uh, flow out of the north kind of coming down across Invest 99L. And that will continue for another day or so, and this is the water vapor energy, which might actually show this better here. A little bit of a, a shearing flow out of the northeast. That's not actually the biggest issue for uh, 99L, though. It's this dry air out in front. Uh, this is an environment it's been moving through for the last couple of days. Uh, the MJO is not in favorable configuration to allow large-scale ascent over the Atlantic. So although we have all these disturbances here, uh, the large-scale environment is pretty dry. Lots of sinking has been going on over the tropical Atlantic before these storms came in. And so as they move into this area, this environment is very, uh, very dry relative to normal in front of them. So this is causing problems both for Fiona along with the shear and also for 99L. And this will likely continue to impede development over the short term. So as this moves toward the northern Lesser Antilles, development is not really expected and the models universally agree right now that this will stay an open wave or a very weak area of low pressure and not develop into a bona fide tropical storm as it moves toward the islands. The National Hurricane Center only gives a 20% chance of a development within two days. It goes up to 50% within five days, and we'll talk about that in a second. But as these waves always come through here, the trade winds aren't that strong right now, and they usually aren't in August. So it may not be that sustained tropical storm force winds are possible with the wave. Can't rule it out, but there may be tropical storm force gusts and very heavy rains at the very least. Uh, probably the worst weather being Martinique and northward here in the northern islands. So uh, they'll have to be ready for that probably by Wednesday morning. Um, will the adverse conditions start moving in. And Puerto Rico will probably get in on some of the bad weather as well come Thursday and Friday as this system continues to move toward the west-northwest around the low-level subtropical ridge to the north. Now, the big uh, deal with this is when it gets beyond the islands and it gets into the Bahamas area. Right now, the models seem to indicate that this will slip north of Hispaniola. And funny things can happen around Hispaniola, so you can't rule out the idea of it getting tangled up. Uh, we might recall Tropical Storm America from last year, where we thought it was going north of Hispaniola and developing into a hurricane uh, in the Bahamas and near Florida. That did not occur, and Erica instead slipped into Hispaniola and was destroyed 
by the high mountains here along with the trade winds in the Caribbean. And so when these waves are coming through, no matter what the models show here, it's a difficult forecast when it's passing through this area near the Greater Antilles because the Caribbean is a hard place to be for a wave that hasn't developed yet and the favorable area waiting for it is still several days off. And so it's going to uh, take some time for us to iron out some of the uncertainties with this system. And there are quite a few uncertainties, not only in the short term, but in the long term here, because even if the system does make it into the Bahamas intact in a few days, there are some things going on. One of those being an upper level trough shown here on the GFS. This is out to day four on Friday morning, showing this uh, big trough here, just kind of uh, positively tilted down into the Western Atlantic. It's uh, coming down here because of this big ridge. There's a big upper high um, over uh, North Carolina. This is the upper level flow in general here, and this orange indicates a strong trough aloft east of that high, and this high kind of pushes this trough down into the southwest Atlantic. And what this does is the backside of the trough is an area of sinking air, and so that deposits a load of dry air down into what is normally a moist and warm uh, area of the Bahamas and north of. So if you look at the mid-level relative humidity for that same time, you see this area of brown, this very dry air being deposited on the backside of that trough and being pushed southward right into the area that Invest 99L is trying to move into. So this is a generally unfavorable situation relative to what we normally have in the Bahamas. Most systems that get to this area have pretty decent conditions this time of year, uh, but it just so happens that we have one of these uh, bursts of dry air, mid-latitude dry air, getting pushed down at the same time. Not only that, but this upper level trough as it comes down can also provide a shearing flow over the storm, and the wind shear uh, can impede the development of the system if it gets too close to this trough. Uh, so how they interact will be crucial, and whether or not 99L can generate substantial convection when it's north of Hispaniola will matter a lot, because if it generates a lot of thunderstorms here, it can generate its own outflow aloft and kind of fight this trough off and be okay. But if it's really weak, it can get easily torn apart by this trough. And this happens to be what the GFS seems to indicate here on its latest run. If we look at uh, day six, this is Sunday morning. This is what it has in the, lo in the low levels. This is 850 millibar vorticity and wind here. And there's, there's a little bit of a circulation here, but it's not really developing. And on this run, the GFS actually does not develop 99L. It's gone back and forth, as many models have, showing development or no development of the system, indicating the uncertainty that we have here. And just as a comparison, the European on Sunday morning has a slightly stronger circulation here, something that does eventually develop into a tropical storm in the Bahamas. And so we have disagreements here between the reliable models of what will transpire, and the ensemble systems for both of these models only have about 10 to 20 percent of their members showing substantial tropical development. That usually tells you that if 80 percent of the members don't have a lot of development, that the situation is pretty fragile and we could easily uh, end up with 99L dissipating somehow or somewhere along its journey toward the west. There are a lot of things in its way, terrain, dry air, shear, more dry air. It's got two rounds of dry air to get through, one here and another coming down here that I, that I just showed you. And it's going to have to get through all of this and remain intact enough that it can generate sufficient convection in the Bahamas area that it can begin feed, feeding back and developing. Whether that occurs is hard, and uh, right now the NHC only gives it a 50% chance of developing within five days, and that 50-50 kind of situation is something we're pretty familiar with with systems of this type. Remember Erica again last year, very on the edge uh, kind of situation. It could really go either way, and that's not a lie. It really could. Um, and the only thing we need to keep an eye on here is if it does get uh, into the Bahamas as a system that has potential, the steering pattern uh, becomes quite weak in this area in the longer term as later this week the models agree that ridging in general develops over the east coast and if a system slips in underneath this ridge here the only way out is this way toward Bermuda but that only will happen if the system develops very very quickly and becomes a hurricane and turns out right now that's not looking very likely so what seems to uh, be the most likely right now is that the system if it gets in here stalls or at least moves rather slowly for a few days, and uh, those few days can give it time over water with which to develop. So it will be something we have to watch very carefully if it does get into this area as a feature of interest. Again, right now, National Hurricane Center gives it a coin flip in terms of development for the next five days, and we'll have to keep a close eye on it. Right now, the imminent threat is to the Lesser Antilles for tropical storm-like conditions possible, probably north of Martinique, 
uh, Wednesday and perhaps into Thursday. But we'll be keeping an eye on this system for the Greater Antilles and points farther west, uh, perhaps through the end of this week and maybe even into next week as well. Uh, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching.